Welcome to uh, Northern Michigan Update. I'm State Senator Jason Allen and today we have a representative from the Department of Natural Resources and as you know the Department of Natural Resources is not just hunting and fishing but there are so many different diverse areas and today we're going to focus on trails. Uh, we recently celebrated the grand opening of the Gaylord to Sheboygan Trail but there are so many different areas that we can get out and hike and bike and snowmobile and horse ride in northern Michigan. I thought we'd uh, spend some time focusing on that. Jim Rodeba is here from the department and what is your official title? My, I have two official titles. Yes. Uh, I'm State Trails Coordinator okay. and I am also Recreation and Trails Section Supervisor for the trails and the State Force Campgrounds. Okay. Very good. So let's start off with, first of all, how did you get started in the DNR and what has been sort of your pathway to how, did, how you got here? Uh, well, my pathway, I was in the private sector okay. doing recreation planning and land use planning for large landowners. I did a contract for the state doing trails oh, really? and trailways. Yeah. And um, a couple years after that, a vacancy uh, came up and they contacted me to see if I would be interested in working wow. for the department. So I accepted, uh, interviewed, and got the job. Wow. So I started out basically in uh, State Forest uh, Campground Program, and that was my introduction. So talk a little bit about State Forest Campgrounds mm -hmm. since you brought that up. Okay. We've got um, uh, state parks, which Correct. we've had some people on talking about state parks. Mm -hmm. and what is the history of State Forest Campgrounds? State Forest Campgrounds are uh, pretty interesting because they originated in Michigan as a uh, way to designate where people would camp and as a method to control forest fires. Really? And it started, the program started in the 1920s. And the first campground uh, is Spring Lake, which is still in existence near Traverse City. Okay. And um, that was the first designated site. It was an experiment at the time to see if people would really go where you know they were developed sites. Mm -hmm. And the system expanded from there. So currently we have uh, 145 campgrounds okay. throughout the state in the roughly you know 3.9 3 million acres of wow. state forest lands. Uh, a little over 3,000 campsites. They're usually pretty rustic and remote, mm -hmm. uh, but that's sort of the market that is right. uh, very attractive to a lot of people to get out in the into the woods, and they're usually on uh, a lake or a stream. Yeah, it was fun. Our Boy Scout trip. I was uh, Eagle Scout and been active. We hiked the Shore to Shore Trail as a kid, and stayed at uh, Lake Dubonnet, a uh, Mud Lake campground, and I think we stayed at Lake Shex uh, as oh, yeah. we hiked along uh, there. And, mm -hmm. and you're right, they are rustic, but they always have some some nice uh, 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 benefit. I know yeah. we were doing some smallmouth bass fishing in Mud Lake and perch and that sort of stuff, and yeah. trout fishing on down there from Shex, and it was just always um, amazing as far as uh, yeah, things yeah, went. What, what is the typical characteristic? You say they're rustic. What mm -hmm. do they normally have? Mm -hmm. Well, the, you'll find an information station that has just bare, basic information about the area. Okay. And um, there'll be a registration station where you have your fee envelope. You write out your uh, information and put your site number on it. You post that on your um, camp post. Mm -hmm. And they'll find a, a hand pump for okay. water yep. and um, a vault toilet yep. and uh, a fire ring and a picnic table at wow. a designated campsite. Wonderful. So it's a so great, it's, great. So it's just very rustic and bring tents to motorhomes. To tents to motorhomes and uh, sites are relatively well spaced apart. There's a lot of vegetation between, you know, campsites and uh, roughly 66 of our campgrounds also have uh, forest pathways, which are non-motorized mm -hmm. uh, trail systems in the mm -hmm. forest. Usually loop systems, or they go to some local natural feature okay. or some area of interest. Um, some of our trails, our pathway systems are groomed, as you know, for cross-country mm -hmm. skiing. And uh, we, we groom roughly 22 of our pathways in the wintertime throughout the state. So we've got, uh, there's a facility down by Ranch Rudolph that I know right. that they do uh, some, uh, that's the Muncie Lake pathways. Correct. And then we've got, uh, let's see, out at uh, uh, Skigamog area, there's a, another uh, pathways out there, and I, the name is escaping. I know there's a couple in the UP, but where, where else in northern Michigan do you Well, I will, I'll refer you to my, our website, okay. and uh, that has a listing of the pathways right. with, that are groomed in okay. the wintertime. Like I said, they're 22, and they're pretty much evenly distributed right. across the Upper Peninsula and the tip of uh, right. the Lower Peninsula. Okay. So uh, there's a lot of choice out there. On the pathways, some of the things that have been challenging is how do you deal with the new types of cross-country skiers, the mm -hmm. skaters versus the traditionals? How do you discern that on the grooming side? 
Well, the, uh, it usually rises up through you know, some local group or yeah. advocate for uh, a different type of grooming activity for ski skating, and some of them are specifically groomed for that. Um, there are a couple of them that are lit uh, near the Sioux is mm -hmm. one, and there's one near Marquette mm -hmm. that's also lit. So each one has a little different flavor, yeah. and so you just have to kind of search out which, what your interests are and what yeah. you're looking for. Okay. Now, I was reading up on the getting ready for some of the Olympics, and they were talking about cross-country skiing. Do, you, do we have people that are coming to the state using our trails to train, or is that just in different areas? No, that's, that's uh, true of the Marquette area. Okay. Uh, there's the Olympic training right. facility near there, and uh, the Blueberry Ridge Pathway, okay. which is one of the state forest pathways, okay. is groomed and is used by the Olympic training team. Wow. And yeah. so that has special requirements and that works through there. Yeah. How about the, you know, and I didn't realize in the cross-country skiing that there's a Scandinavian sport where you shoot and then ski and then shoot and ski? Yes, yeah, there is. That's, yeah, that's an Olympic event. Right. There's a, not an Olympic event, but there's another type of skiing, okay. which is called skijoring which is where a dog or two dogs pull you okay. and you're on skis and that's a very popular activity oh, in, wow. the, in the Upper Peninsula, wow. Central and Western Upper Peninsula. Okay, well yeah. see we represent the Eastern part and I, I haven't okay. run into so that. so you haven't run into that Yeah, yet. but I'll, I'll check that out. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, what about snowshoers? Do you, is there much or do they just sort of head out into the... They can head out onto, you know, into right. their own, but you know, like I said, we're only grooming 22 of the 66 okay. pathways. So okay. there are other pathways out there that are marked okay. and uh, you know, people can utilize those those okay. to, to get out or just break their own trail through right. the woods. Well, let's move on to sort of what uh, we go from state forest campgrounds mm -hmm. with tied to a pathway. Correct. Now, are, are most of these pathways, are we working on interconnection between the pathways through major trails or what is the DRR plan on that? Well, the pathways are more standalone mm -hmm. uh, trails because they are sort of developed around natural features, right. usually locally. Right. Um, we are looking at trying to tie our state trailway system to some of our okay. pathways, which is more of an opportunity right mm -hmm. now as we grow that system. We have roughly 1,100 miles at this point of trailways, which I should explain are former railroad corridors okay. that the state has acquired and have uh, developed for recreation purposes. Okay. Um, and it's a mix of motorized, non-motorized use, depending upon where they're located. but. Um, a lot of them in northern Michigan are utilized for snowmobiling. Mm -hmm. um, in the summertime, they can be used for longer distance uh, mountain biking, sure. for instance, or horseback riding. And it's those kind of summer activities that we're trying to link people to uh, our pathways and our campgrounds that okay. might be closely associated okay. with those trailways. Okay. So starting off with sort of the, the, I had an old timer asking me if mm -hmm. the price of fuel keeps going up. Mm -hmm. Does the state have the ability to lay tracks again on some of these if they wanted to, or is that not a, a option or does well, it depend? Well, some of the trailways are purchased and preserved under the, uh, the uh, Railroad Protection Act. Okay and there's a state and a federal act and mm -hmm. there's a variety of options there but some of them are protected for future okay. recreation per, or trail okay. purposes okay. or um, interim trail okay. use with future transportation purposes. Okay, very good. And um, the idea of laying track again okay. would depend on the economics of the sure. business coming oh, in and wanting to, to restore right. that rail. A absolutely, and I, 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 you know, it was amazing when I started looking into it because it was over in the Rogers mm -hmm. City area, mm -hmm. and they were looking at the, at the cost of a million dollars a mile to lay track, but yes. it, was, you know, it was a group that was looking at, at the future and what's gonna be expanding with mm -hmm. the potential of a, a lot of different things going yeah. on over there, and yeah. so I, I, it's just amazing sort of hearing the history of, of some of these folks and how they, what are some of the more unique, you know, you've got 1,100 miles of trails, what mm -hmm. are some of the more unique things that you've ever, sort of the acquisition processes on some of these? On, of railroad property? Or uh, of all properties on yeah, some well, of these. Well, railroad properties are unique in themselves yeah. in terms of the negotiations that go on with rail companies because it's a very, uh, what do I say, fluid uh, okay. real estate market in terms okay. of the, the ownerships churning over and other other groups buying out those right. interests. So sometimes our negotiation for these corridors can go on for up to 10 years right. before we can secure right. the lands. Uh, like for the Falling Waters Trails in Jackson County, for instance, okay. it took us 10 years to negotiate wow. um, the purchase of that, wow. which, which we just acquired in the early 2000s. And okay. It's now been developed into a trail. Okay. Um, 